Hello my friends, welcome to Spooky Season. Today's video is your one-stop location for Halloween bullet journal theme inspiration. All you'll need is your journal, a fine liner, an eraser and pencil, and your favorite markers. And I promise all of these are super easy to execute and I'm gonna show you how to do every single step. This first theme is all about adorable doodles. The first thing we're going to do is make a box in the page. I've counted in three spaces from each side, and that means there's less space that we need to fill up with doodles. Starting in the corners, we're going to make lines coming out from the point of the corner, and then join the lines up further away from the corner and a little bit closer to the corner with some curved lines, and that makes an instant spider web. We'll add another one in the opposite corner. If you like to keep things minimal, then just adding the heading in the center could give you your entire theme right there. So I'm going to add in my October heading here. A great way to achieve a spooky lettering look is to go over your letters a couple of times, making sure there's a little bit of a gap in between the lines. You don't even need to evenly space your letters for this one. Let's add another spider web. This one's just going to be floating underneath October, so it's not coming from the corner this time. If you don't consider yourself much of an artist, that could be your theme right there. Add another one maybe up above the October here or something like that, but I'm going to carry on and show you some more doodle ideas. Starting with the classic jack-o'-lantern, so you're going to almost draw something like brackets, except vertically. I like mine to be a little bit square, but you can make them round if you like. Then add another line on each side that comes from the side of the bracket down to the bracket underneath. Add a tiny little curly stalk on the top and you've drawn a pumpkin. Now just add two triangles for eyes and you can colour those in. Another little triangle in between them, a little bit lower for a nose. And I recommend you outline your mouth with a pencil first so you can make a semicircle kind of shape and then work out where you'd like teeth to dip into that so that when you jump back in with your fine liner, you can just make sure that you're leaving those teeth without any colour in them. What a cute little pumpkin friend. Let's do another one down the bottom, just the exact same way. Also, if you're curious about any of the supplies I'm using in this video, I will have everything linked in the description box below so you can find anything that you need. Next, we're going to learn how to draw a bat. So start with a circle with your pencil and then turn the bottom part into kind of a triangle that's a little bit rounded. Add two pointy little triangles at the top Next, you're going to add a V-shaped line that comes out from the head, two lines that come out from the point of that V-shape, and then connect all the ends of all of those lines up and back to the circle that you drew in the beginning. Now you have the outline for your bat. I'm going to outline all of that with my fine liner. If you'd like to leave it as an outline like this, you can, but I'm going to color mine in with my fine liner, so it has this kind of scratchy effect. I really like that. I've been using the Pigma Micron 03 for all of my fine liner so far, but I've switched to the 08 which is a little bit thicker to colour this in, just to make the process go a little bit faster. Let's add another bat up the top, just the exact same system. This time I'm going straight in with fine liner because I know I'm going to colour it in anyway. While we're here drawing bats, if you are enjoying what you're seeing so far, maybe consider hitting subscribe and sticking around here on my channel. I'd love to have you. My very favorite Halloween icon is the black cat, so let's learn how to draw one of those. You'll start with a crescent moon shape for the head, then bring a line from the middle of that crescent moon down. Next, we'll give it a big arch on its back because I guess it's a scared Halloween cat. From the end of that arch, bring it up into a big reverse question mark shaped tail. Bring the back of that tail down about the same length as that front line for a little leg. Add a tiny little paw at the bottom and then a big arch to connect the two and you just drew a kitty. I'm going to color my kitty in just exactly the same way as we did with the bats, just a very scratchy, fine liner, cross-hatched kind of way, because I know I want my kitty to be a black cat. Now we'll just add three lines out to each side of the face for whiskers and your kitty is all set. I'm going to add another kitty down a bit lower. This one is the exact same but in reverse. 
Staggering your doodles like this is a great way to balance the visual weight of the page. So I'm trying to make sure that I have one of each of my decorations above my October header and one of them below. It's also good to vary the size of your doodles as well. So my second kitty here is a little bit smaller than the first. Here's a really easy doodle. This one is a headstone in a graveyard. So start with a square and then add a semicircle at the top and that is the outline for your gravestone. Add a slightly horizontal line coming out from the top and bottom and then follow the curve of your semicircle as you connect those up and that is the outside of your gravestone and we've even made it a little bit 3D. When you go over it with your fine liner, don't draw over the top line of the square, just continue up to the semicircle and that's how you'll get the outline of your gravestone. I'd like to add some shading along the side here just to increase the depth a little bit. And then you could add whatever you like on the front. I'm just adding RIP and a little cross because that seems appropriate for a gravestone. I actually haven't left enough space on my page for any more gravestones, so let's go on to the next doodle. This one's a potion bottle, and they can be any shape. The first shape I'm starting with here is a circle, so I'm just adding a circle but flattening the bottom, adding a rectangle at the top with a sort of triangle jammed into the top of the rectangle. I've added some liquid in the bottle by staying inside of that circle shape at the bottom, following the shape on the sides and at the bottom and then making it flat across as though that's how much of the bottle the liquid is taking up. And there we have a beautiful little potion bottle. These are such versatile doodles because you can fit them into so many different areas. If you've only got a little bit of space you can do a tiny potion bottle, if you've got more space you can do a big one. This one I'm making more like a normal bottle shape and this one down the bottom I'm making into a triangle shape instead. Another great way to fill in space is to add some leaves. So I've added a little vine down the bottom here. It's just a few lines with skinny teardrop shapes coming off. And I'm going to put those in a few different places around the doodle, just to break things up a little bit, add a little bit more magic, and effectively fill in that negative space too. Another great filler is the crescent moon, which is just like the kitty head that we drew earlier. I'm adding those into some spaces too. Some of them are going one direction, some the other direction. And in the gaps left over, I'm adding stars upon stars upon stars. Some of them are those little five point stars that you can do without taking your pen off the paper. Some of them are little asterisks and some of them are diamond shapes where the edges curve in a little bit. If you mix these three styles of stars up and vary the sizes of them, you can fill in that negative space in a way that looks truly magical and also adorable. If you like to stay monochrome, you can leave this here, but I want to add some color. So I'm using three pens, an orange, a purple, and a gray. And I'm just going in kind of sparingly, so of course my pumpkins have to be orange and I'm colouring in their stalks in grey. My crescent moons are going to be both orange and purple. I'm just trying not to put orange next to orange and purple next to purple if that makes sense. And the same with the potions in the potion bottles. I want them to be different to whatever's next to them. In case you're curious about the specific pens I'm using, I have the Faber-Castell Pit Artist brush pen in orange glaze and purple violet, and the Tombow dual tip brush pen in N89. I wanted the October header to pop a little bit more, so I've just added some orange over it to give it a little bit of something. And that's a fun cover page, but how would you incorporate this into a wider theme throughout your journal? So on the right page, I'm setting this up like it would be the second page of a weekly, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in these horizontal boxes. And I'm just leaving the sides of the boxes open on alternate sides, so the left side open on the top box and then the right side open and so on. Then I'm using those spaces to pair up a couple of the doodles that we've just learned how to draw to give a little bit of that decoration and a continuation of the box theme while still leaving plenty of room for planning. So this first one I've got two potion bottles next to each other with a little bit of a plant tendril and I knew I wanted the designs here to overlap the sides of the boxes a little bit which is why I left them open so that I could draw the boxes in afterwards once I knew where my little decoration parts were going to sit. For the next one, I'm adding a spider web in the top corner, just like the way we did on the cover page, and a cute little jack-o'-lantern under the Friday header as well. 
For this one, the jack-o'-lantern is sitting on the bottom of the box as though that's a tabletop, so it was okay to close in this box before adding the illustrations this time. And I thought it needed something in this gap, so I've added a little candle, which is just a rectangle with two teardrop shapes on top. I feel like this candle looks like the Babylon candle from Stardust. Going back to overlapping the sides of the box, I'm adding a crescent moon on the next one down and a gravestone to give this kind of symmetry in the moonlight vibe. And my gravestone is from the opposite perspective this time. Just adding some purple into my little stars here because I want each of the colours to be represented in each of these weekly boxes too. And some bats for the corner of the last box. I'm doing three bats, all in different sizes, slightly different orientations, so it kind of looks like they might be flying straight at you, which is a little bit of a terrifying thought, but it's okay because they're adorable cartoon bats, so they can't hurt you, it's alright. This box overlapping combining doodle system could work on absolutely any page, so if you just plan ahead when you're working out where things will go on your page, you can make sure that they incorporate into habit trackers and around the sides of calendars and things like that. And I think having them overlap the boxes like this makes it look very intentional and a little bit professional. The next theme idea is a haunted house on a hill. If you were looking at that last one thinking, oh that's too much drawing for me, then this one might be a good option for you because there's a little bit of drawing involved in the cover page, but the decoration for subsequent pages is super easy and fast. So I've started out with a circle, I just drew around this old candle holder that I now use as a vase, and I've cut off the bottom of the circle with a not quite flat line to be the hill that our house will sit on. First you want to find the middle of the circle, the middle of the page, and draw a rectangle for the door. And then we're going to just move in stages here, so we're going to build the center of the house first. I've added a rhombus on top of the front door to be like a little awning, and then we're going to extend some lines up. The center column of the house is going to be three stories, while the outsides are going to be two, so it's going to give us this nice shape. So at the top I'm adding another kind of a triangle this time rather than a rhombus to be the roof on the very top of the house with a little pointy thing on top to decorate. We'll add a window just under that roof, it's going to be a pointy curved triangle shape with shutters coming out to each side. And then a big arched window under that which we're going to add some window panes into just by dividing it in thirds horizontally and vertically. Next we'll work out how wide the sides of the house are going to be, so I think I did one and a half spaces and I've added some lines on the top here as though there's a balcony. I think that's a bit inspired by the Adams Family house. Just doing the exact same thing on the opposite side. Another awning on this side as though it is just above the windows we're about to draw in below these. I'm adding a dividing line here so that I know where the next story would start, but you could leave that out if you want to. And then we're just going to bring this side all the way down to the ground and add a square for a window and divide it so that it's got window panes as well. The same right below it. And then the opposite side we're going to do a little bit differently. So it will also have a window on the second floor but below that there's going to be a little porch or veranda. I decided I wanted my door to be glass with window panes as well, so we're just adding that little detail there. And then two lines coming out from the front door as though you're walking up the path to the haunted house. 
So I'm just going to add the same colours that I used on the previous page to give a little bit of extra detail here. I'm doing the orange in the windows as though they're lit by candlelight and the purple on all of the balconies and then just the grey on the building itself. And how easy is that? You've just drawn a little haunted house with just basically straight lines. Next I'm going to define where the hill is that the house is sitting on with my fine liner here. And I actually think if you have a blackout bullet journal with black pages or if you wanted to cover the bottom half of the page in black this would look so amazing. Now I'm taking a silver paint pen and I'm going over that circle that we drew earlier and that is the outline of the moon. Now technically if you have a light source behind something like this, if you were to look at it with your eyes or take a photo of it, it would be a silhouette. So if you didn't want to add all of the detail to the house and you just wanted to colour the whole thing in black and maybe just leave the windows in yellow or orange, I think that would look really amazing. Um, I'm just going to ignore the laws of how light works for this particular design because I think it's cute and it doesn't matter. My paint pen has covered a few of the details so I'm just jumping back in there with my fine liner to add those back in. Over here on the hill I'm adding a couple of little gravestones, one is a cross and one is the dome shaped gravestone, just to give it that extra little haunted house kind of feeling. And I think they did actually have cemeteries at some of these old houses for when the family members passed on. It's not a haunted house without some gnarled old dead trees, so that's what's coming next. I'm using my fine liner to add this curvy tree trunk and the way trees work it's very kind of organic and easy actually. You can just draw lines coming off of lines coming off of lines as long as they're getting smaller and thinner as you get towards the top then you're doing it great and there's not really any formula to it. Uh, you can just keep adding these lines in anywhere that you feel like needs it so I added an extra branch at the bottom here just because I wanted to see how that looked. And I'm going to add another tree on the other side and I'm not going to try and make them look the same or anything because trees don't do that in real life so they'll both be different and that's exactly the way I want it. I do want them to look like they're about the same height though as though maybe they were planted at around the same time but otherwise just like eyebrows, sisters not twins. Those trees have actually set up the basis for our easy decoration that's going to come with us into the other pages of this design too and that is trees. So this time rather than little trees where we can see the whole tree within the picture I'm adding these branches as though we're standing amongst some trees. So maybe you've just walked out of a forest and this house is at the end of the pathway. These are just the branches that overhang they're going to frame our haunted house really nicely on the page here and the way I do these is just the same way as those trees before. So I like to do scratchy backwards and forwards motions with the pen to give you that kind of messy gnarled look and again it's just lines coming off lines and they can pour out however you like. I knew that I wanted some of my branches to overlap with the moon so that's one thing that I'm making sure happens here but besides that absolutely no rules. And now I'm just adding my October header at the bottom. I'm going to start from the middle letter so that I know it's in the center and work my way forward and then backwards from there. I actually spaced out the first half a little bit too much doing it this way, but ordinarily this works really well for me. To show you how this design could work in context, I'm going to add a single page calendar on the opposite page. And I'm using October 2022 as my guide, even though I have already done an October 2022 setup. And if you'd like to see that, it is not Halloween themed at all, but I will pop a link up in the top right corner for you and also in the description in case you'd like to see. Just like we did earlier, I'm going to add some more branches above and below this calendar just to bring that theme in all together. I really wanted it to feel like you were standing in a forest looking at this house. And on to the next theme. This one is less spooky and a little bit more for those of you who want to have a cozy Halloween kind of vibe in your journal instead. So I'm using that same circle as the basis, but this time we're going to make a cute little wreath. And this is the kind of wreath that is open at the top and we get to use some of the doodles that we learned earlier. This is the exact same pumpkin as we used in the first theme, except I'm not going to give it eyes and a mouth and a nose this time. This is just a cute little pumpkin. He's not a jack-o'-lantern. He hasn't been carved. 
I've placed that in the bottom, sort of towards the right side of the wreath, and I'm adding another pumpkin just behind him on the right. This one is a little bit bigger, and a tiny little pumpkin just to the left of him. And now we've got three cute little pumpkins. Going to add a couple of leaves coming out from the side. These are just normal teardrop, very basic standard kind of leaf shapes. This probably seems a bit pedantic, but I've added the pumpkins on the ground, sort of at the bottom of the wreath because that makes the most sense to me. And something else that you'd find on the ground is mushrooms. So I've added a little mushroom kind of springing from behind this pumpkin, and I'm going to add two more just to the left side here as well. I guess these are oyster mushrooms because they have this kind of round shaped base and then a round top and they're very cute. From here on out, it's just leaves, 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 and some sticks. So I'm doing three different kinds of leaf here, and I'm trying not to put too many of the same type next to each other. One is that standard teardrop shape. One is a center line with kind of a wiggly leaf shape around the outside. And the other one is this three-pointed leaf, which I'll show you again in a second. I'm just repeating these three different kinds of leaf following that circle line around the outside. I'm not trying to stick to it too closely, and then every now and then I'm adding a little stick poking out as well, which follow the same formula as those tree branches from before. So the three pointed leaf has a center line and then two lines that point out towards each of the points. You could do all one type of leaf if you'd like to, but I just find having different shapes in there gives it some nice texture. And then as we get closer to the top where the wreath is going to not touch at the top of center, that's where we really transition into the sticks to finish things off. And any leaves that you add at the top there, you wanna make them a little bit smaller than the leaves at the bottom, because that's the way that foliage grows. As we have new leaves, they come through smaller, they gradually grow bigger, and then the smaller leaves keep growing kind of on top of those. And we'll continue that all the way around until the wreath is finished. Here's where it gets really fun. Colors! I've basically grabbed out every shade of orange and yellow that I own, and I'm going to vary them up a little bit. So of course some orange on the pumpkins, but I didn't want them all to be the same orange right next to each other, so I'm varying it up with a different one as well. Still using my gray as a little accent color because I think they look so lovely next to each other. So the stalks on all of my pumpkins and also my mushrooms will all be gray and some leaves too later on. I was planning to color each of the same kind of leaf in the same color, so the three pointed leaves here were all going to be the same orange, but I realized as I went through that that meant I would have some of the same color next to itself and I didn't want that so much. So I've ended up just trying to make sure that my colors were not touching each other and not right next to each other, if that makes sense. Now all we need is the October heading in the middle or whatever else you would like to write. It could be a quote, it could be Halloween, it could be anything at all. And I think this is actually my favorite of the three themes. It's just so cozy and sweet and adorable. So how do we apply this to decoration throughout the rest of the theme? So this time I'm gonna show you with my current favorite page in my setups, which is my gratitude, goals, and currently sections. This is kind of similar to the weekly on our first theme where I'm adding these decorations in in such a way that they sit just in front of some of the lines that delineate where the boxes for this layout go. So this time I'm doing a pumpkin with a little stick sitting right behind it, making sure that I sketch out where it's going to go and add my heading in before I close up the box so that I can make sure to leave space around my cute little pumpkin and branch here. For the goals box, this time I'm going to have some leaves come from the side of the page on a little branch from the top right corner of the goals box. And this is not biologically accurate in any way, but this is one branch with uh, three different kinds of leaf on it. Funnily enough, what a marvel. These are just those same three leaves that we used on the wreath on the cover page there. 
And again, I'm going to vary up the colors on these ones too, as though it's just turning to autumn and the colors are changing, even though it is spring for me here in Australia right now. I'm just so jealous of everyone who's seeing the colors change. The last box is for currently anything that I'm enjoying currently goes in this box and I'm bringing back the mushrooms for this one so I'm adding right in the center bottom of the currently box I'm drawing those mushrooms in. I considered having so many that they took up the whole bottom of the currently box but I decided that was a bit too much work so instead I've added in one more little pumpkin here, a tiny little baby pumpkin to be friends with the mushrooms and then we'll just close off the bottom of the box around those and add color. Thank you so much for planning with me for the Halloween season. I hope that you got inspired from this video. And if you do make anything that's inspired by it, please do show me. I want to see. Tag me on Instagram. I am at erinsmith.art or send me a DM or something like that. I'd love to see. Leave me your favorite Halloween emoji in the comments down below if you made it all the way to the end of this video. I hope you have a wonderful October and Halloween season and I will catch you in another video next week. Bye.